Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on electrostatics. This is video number 3B and I'm going to discuss the field of a wire. This is number 2 in that series. I've already done one on um, which I'll speak about in a moment. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstorias.com. Also, if you'd like to find out some news and updates and all that sort of thing about the videos I'm posting, you can follow me on Twitter at AdamBT503. So the previous video to this is the most general video on a wire where I had I had we'll say linear symmetry and it was just, it made the problem a lot easier and thereafter I was able to look at the, the two limits when the distance from to the detector versus the length of the wire was large and versus when it was small and I also discussed the electric field in video number two. So this is going to be similar to video number three A but I'm going to have no symmetry. So let's let's suggest that this that's the uh, that's the z-axis. This is the x-axis. So this is z. But I'm detecting from a point P. And on the z-axis we have our wire as normal. Okay. So what I'm trying to work out is the electric field due to the wire. We'll say from here to here, whatever it is, and um, yeah, we'll say let's at point L. And I want to detect the, the, the calculate the field up there. I'm going to define theta up here as normal. And this is our separation vector as, as normal as well, that's not a unit vector. So, and the separation vector points in that particular direction. So, this is pretty straightforward, right? I'm going to note that we have i hat in this direction, positive, and k hat in this direction being positive. So, as we said previously, well, we can break this up, to, uh, to, oh, excuse me, we can break this down into e sub x in the i hat direction and e sub y in the, or e sub z, excuse me, in the k hat direction. Alright, so we're going to have two components here. So if we look in the x direction, the electric field in the x direction is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to find L like that. It's going to be, well, first of all, it's in the i hat direction, but in actual fact, it's going to be in the negative i hat direction, so you have minus. And I'm going to let k equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So I have minus k like that. Now we have a linear distribution of charge, I, I suppose I didn't say that, but I'm, 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 it's kind of implied, Continuer, continuous linear distribution of charge. So it's going to be lambda dx prime, that's going to be the torque, that's going to be a charge, and this is probably d e sub x, I suppose that's the way I should put it. And we're going to have, this time we're going to have a sine theta component, because the component of the field in the i hat direction has a sine theta component. And now we're going to define that by the separation vector squiggle squared like that. Now the direction is, because of course it's in the i-hat direction, well, we have to give it the unit vector i-hat, that is, that's the direction it is. And dE sub z is similar, but it's going to be k lambda dx prime cos of theta k-hat divided by squiggle squared. Alright? That's pretty straightforward stuff. So, as I'm sure you're well able to, to see, the separation vector to be squared is equal to z squared plus x squared. Okay, cos theta is equal to um, z divided by the square root of z squared plus x squared. And sine theta is equal to x over the square root of z squared plus x squared. So, what we can do is you can plug all those in and compute our integrals. Now, as I said in the last video, the integrals actually aren't that easy to do. But, um, yeah, so I'm just going to actually write down the answer. So, e sub x is going to be equal to minus k times lambda outside the integral from 0 to L of x prime dx prime divided by... The, uh, we'll say x prime to be squared plus z squared to the power of 3 over 2. That of course is going to be in the i hat direction. Like that, or the negative i hat direction. And we can say the total field in the z direction is something similar, but this time it's going to be plus uh, k lambda z. Now z is going to be outside the integral because we're integrating with respect to x along the wire. So in that respect, um, or in that regard, z is a constant. So once again, we're integrating from 0 to L. 
with this time dx prime divided by the square root of x prime to be squared plus z squared. Notice, by the way, I'm using the primes just to, to, uh, to illustrate the fact that we're talking about source charges. It, it might look kind of trivial here, but it, it is very important, definitely when we get later. So the answers to this are, are as follows. It's just minus k times lambda outside of uh, 1 over z minus 1 over square root of z squared plus l squared. Just take that. It's 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 the uh, it's the physics that we're talking about here rather than the um, rather than anything else. Okay, and then in the z direction, it's going to be equal to uh, k lambda divided by z this time. Then we're going to have an l over the square root of z squared plus l squared. Okay, and finally, just for completeness. Let's put them all together and we find that the total electric field is equal to lambda over k times z outside of z divided by z squared plus l squared minus 1 in the i hat direction. And we also have L divided by square root of z squared plus L squared in the k hat direction. Okay, and close that off there. So without our symmetry, the reason I'm showing this is because without the symmetry we have we have components and it just makes life a bit more difficult. Whereas the last time, because of the symmetry, our our i hat components were just killed straight away. So that's all I've got to say with that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.